March with the Glen Carbon Library. We are going to be doing a rainbow milk experiment today that's going to be talking about the properties of soap and water. The things that you're going to need for this experiment are some milk. I actually have about a cup of milk poured into each one of these containers for my helpers. Um, we need dish soap, which I have put a little bit in each one of these little bowls. Food coloring. And Nora, would you hold up the cotton swabs, please? And some cotton swabs, enough for everybody to have some. Okay. Um, I'm basing this experiment on this book from our collection, which is called How to Soap Clean Your Hands, The Science Behind Healthy Habits. And this book is written by Madeline Hayes, illustrated by Sermali Fosani. And it's got some really neat and interesting information in it about how soap works and why it is so important to wash your hands all of the time, but especially right now. So um, you can check that out from our library. This is our copy, and after I'm done filming this video, it will be checked back into our collection. So if you're interested in learning some more about it, feel free to come by and check it out. Okay, so here's what we're gonna be doing. Soap has some properties that make it really helpful for washing your hands. In fact, at the very end of this book, they have another experiment that is very similar to the one that we're gonna be doing today, but a little bit different. We're gonna make it a little more colorful and fun by making it rainbow. This one doesn't have rainbow in it. But it goes through and it explains two different properties of soap and why soap works the way it does. Soap has two properties. Um, it's made up of two parts. One part is called hydrophilic and one part is called hydrophobic. Now hydro means water, phobic means afraid, and so hydrophobic part of the soap is going to make things go away from it. The hydrophilic part um, is, is attracted to whatever it is. So the hydrophobic part is the part that we're going to be looking at today. And what happens is the water will make things move away from it. So we're going to show that with our food coloring and our milk. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do a quick example in this container right here. And then I'm going to let each one of my helpers, Evie, Nora, and Abel, do it in their own bowls to show us how it works as well. All right, so as you can see here, I have my milk and I have a bunch of different food colorings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one drop of each kind of food coloring into the milk. The more colors you do, the more fun it's going to look when we um, use the hydrophobic part of the soap. All right, so I'm going to add one drop of each color to the milk here. So there's one. Oh, I hope this works. I'm gonna try. This might be the wrong kind of food coloring. It's the gel kind, it's sunk. There's another. It sinks. Yes, it does sink. Oh, there, it's kind of coming to the top. I'm not sure if you can see it yet. Yellow. Go in rainbow order here. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, pink. We'll probably just do it that way. Um, well, that was two drops. Oh. That's okay. And purple, then. And there's purple. We're going to do two drops of that one. And then turquoise. And then we'll save turquoise for last. Yep, now be real careful with the food coloring. It can stain different things, so make sure you've got your adult helping you. Okay, so you can see my milk here. I'm gonna try not to stir it or shake it up too much, but you can see all the colors in it. So I'm gonna take my cotton swab and I'm gonna dip it in the dish soap. So this, this is the soap that has the hydrophilic and the hydrophobic properties to it. And we're gonna watch the hydrophobic properties right now. I'm just going to touch the soap on the cotton swab 
into the milk and we're gonna watch what happens. Whoa. You can see it's making the colors go away. Cool. And it kind of made like a rainbow swirl. You can swirl it around. It, yeah. it, it chases it around. So unfortunately you can only do this that one time because once the hydrophobic properties of this soap have been used, once the molecules of it have attached to the, the color and made them repel, um, it won't work again which is why we're gonna show you again with each one of these three um, bowls here. So we're gonna get the kids all set up with theirs and we'll show you theirs as well. But that's okay. okay. So here's that's Evie okay. and she is putting her colors into her milk. Be hard to. Okay, so now Evie has gotten all of her colors in her milk and she's going to dip the end of her cotton swab into the soap, just a little bit, there you go. And now we're gonna watch an explosion of color in our milk when she touches it. Whoa. And that is the hydrophobic properties of soap working on the food coloring that is in our milk. Pretty cool. All right, now let's let Nora have her turn. Okay, here is Nora adding her food coloring to her milk. Okay, okay and now Nora is going to take her cotton swab and she's going to dip it into the dish soap just a little bit and we're going to watch the hydrophobic properties of the dish soap <laughs> as she touches it to her colors and we're gonna watch the explosion of color in her milk. Look at how far away that blue, it went all the way to the end of the bowl. That's how far those hydrophobic properties make that soap or make that food coloring repel from the soap. And you can see she kind of stirs up some of those colors on the bottom. It kind of, well, now you're just stirring it, but it kind of made some of those colors repel too before she got them all mixed together. Hmm. All right, now it's on to Abel's turn. Okay, so Abel has decided that he only wants to use three of the colors. He would like to only use red, orange, and yellow. So since this is a science experiment and we're gonna try different variables, we're gonna see what happens when we only use three different colors. So go ahead, Abel, go ahead and maybe add three or four drops of each color since we only have three colors this time. Okay, that should be good. Try to keep them on top of each other, that should be good. Now put the yellow right between where you put the red and the orange. Okay. Okay. That should be good. Okay, so Abel has put his three colors into his milk, and we're going to put the cotton swab into the soap, and we'll see the hydrophobic properties. Oh, hold on, let's see. Oh, look, there it goes. There it goes, and he has stirred his up, and his looks very different than the other girls. So you can see how the soap repelled um, the food coloring and made it look like a rainbow explosion. Okay, so we got to see a rainbow explosion in milk that showed us the hydrophobic properties of soap. I think most dish soaps should work for this, but you can always try some, and if it doesn't, if you have the opportunity, you can try a different kind and see if that works as well. So, Exactly what is happening is that milk contains a lot of different fats and proteins. And just like oil, the fat and the protein molecules attach easily to the soap molecules. And when the soap touches the milk, it starts grabbing up all of the fat proteins with the hydrophilic properties. And then the attraction between the soap and the fat causes the molecules to move quickly and it creates these colorful explosions you see. So not only is the hydrophobic 
properties of the soap, making the um, food coloring repel and go away. It is attracting the fat and the proteins with the hydrophilic properties and making like this almost circular motion in the milk where you see this milk moving in and you see the colors moving out and it's this beautiful colorful explosion. And so hopefully in the next couple of days we see maybe some rainbows in the sky that will remind us of this of this little experiment um, because it is springtime. And so while we have lots of gray skies and rain, we'll also see some beautiful rainbows, hopefully, yeah. So thank you for joining me for this video. I had fun. We had fun with our rainbow milk explosion, and I look forward to seeing you at the next one. Thanks, bye.